All right, now at this point, I just need to get rid of all the shoulder material down here. So I'm going to step down to the lower subdivision levels. I'm going to mask out the top of the head here, and I'm just going to start smoothing this stuff and then moving it up here. Smoothing it back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clip brush, which is one of the new hard surface brushes in ZBrush. I'm going to use that just to slice this down. So we'll step back up to the highest subdivision level here. And I'm just going to use the clay tubes brush to kind of even all this out because we're going to need to slice it down so we don't want it to be too lumpy and strange. Now I'm going to go to the brush menu. I'm going to select the clip curve brush. And this is a control shift brush, so I need to click OK. Now when I hold down control and shift, it gives me this curve. You notice that it's got a faded feathered edge on one side. That's the side it'll, it'll actually cut. So if I draw like this, it's going to cut or clip everything on the faded edge of the line. So if I let go, it's going to process the symmetry. It's going to think a little bit, and then it's going to start slicing that. As you can see right there, it just sliced that head. And what it's actually done here, it's just pressed all of those faces up into a flat plane. But it gives you the appearance of a really nice cut there. Now you could even get really elaborate draw your line. If you hold down the shift key you can actually move it around. So I'll draw it here to the to the, uh, the mastoid process, the base of the skull. And then if I just double click the alt button I can create a hard edge. And then if I click the alt key once I can create a curve. Now if I let go of that it'll slice it all the way right up to the base of the skull. There you go. You can see the effect that that has there. All right, so let's save this. This will be our work on our head, and then we're going to go ahead and start thinking about the uh, the back of the skull and some of the mechanics on here. We'll revisit the face, but we've just got generally an idea of what we what we what we want at this point. At this point, we're going to start thinking about creating some negative space here at the back of the skull so we can see some kind of mechanical elements happening on the inside. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this head. And the reason is I want to be able to maintain the volume of the back of its skull so I can use that to create other, other parts, maybe some metal housing and things like that. I haven't really decided yet, but I don't want to just carve the back of the head away and then not have this shape stored anywhere else. So I'll just duplicate the subtool and I'll just turn off visibility on the other one. I'm just going to keep that as a bit of reference just in case I need it later on in the process. And I'm going to use some clip brushes and probably the move brush a little bit here. I just want to start thinking about carving out the back of the head. So I'm going to step down a few subdivision levels here. And just using the move brush, I'm just going to go ahead and start getting an idea of what I'm going to carve out. Perhaps a shape like that would be cool. So I want to make sure that it's somewhat visible from three-quarter. I don't want it to be something that you have to be looking at the, the character from behind to even appreciate it. I'm going to mask out the face because I really don't want to disturb those, those bits while we're moving this stuff around. Let's step up a few subdivision levels here. Let's see what we've got. All 
All right, let's try to use our clipping brush here to carve out just a nice little plane right here. Now what's going to be tricky is that because the clipping brush pushes all the faces forward into a flat plane, I need to make sure that I'm not clipping to a point that's curving around towards the front because then all of these faces here would just get flattened to this point right here and you'd end up with a little flag of faces sticking out on the side. So what I'll do is go ahead and try and make sure that that gets cut correctly. There you go. You can see how that cut a nice little bit there. So I'm going to mask out all this stuff here because I don't want to actually inadvertently cut this yet. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to drag my, my line here. bit tricky. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the clip circle brush. We'll see if we can't use this instead. I'm just going to trim my way to that point. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Now I can mask out this portion here. Go back to my clip curve brush. And in this case, you may notice at this point that that clip curve, the faded out section, is facing the wrong direction. If I hold down the Alt key, it'll cut in the opposite direction for me. Let's invert that mask and let's try and run another cut along here. There we go. go back to that clip circle brush. When you're using the clip circle brush, you want to make sure that the, the crosshair there doesn't actually cross over into the model. It'll create little weird shapes like that, which sometimes you may find useful. Like let's say I did that back here. It would give me this interesting kind of um, almost like a joint shape there, which is actually something kind of cool, and I'll probably make use of that. But at this point, not quite yet. I'll probably do it there. I like having that, that there. So if I do one in the center here. You see what happens. Actually nothing happens there. If I do it like that, you see we get shapes like this. So it's, a, it's an interesting shape that you can create. It just doesn't necessarily always have a lot of consistency when you're making them. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. You just know that you'll get some kind of uh, cylindrical form interpenetrating the model. Uh, it's unlike if you cut like this, keeping that circle or that crosshair outside, you'll know exactly what you're going to get. So if I mask this out,
there you can see I'm getting one of those little flagged faces right there. I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem because it's sitting here back in the back and it's probably going to be covered with mechanical bits later, but just to be careful, just to be aware of those, that they are something that will come up. Sometimes they can actually be kind of cool. That has an interesting effect there. But I don't know that I'm going to take advantage of it. It's checking this character under perspective. That actually has an interesting effect that I will hang on to. Now while you're doing this, you can see that this is all one polygroup. If I undo that last one that I did there, and if I held down control and space, it gives me this new marking menu. If I turn on B, uh, polygroup, what happens now is, if I do that same thing here, if I do a, a clip curve here, gives me the same effect. If I turn on frame mode, you'll see it's actually polygrouped those faces for me. So that can actually come in quite handy while you're working if you keep polygroup turned on and it'll automatically polygroup any sort of trim or plane cuts that you make. Any clip cuts, that is. So I'm just taking a look at this guy, making sure that that's what I want. I'm going to use this clip brush to make some points of contact through here that I'm going to use for pipes later on. There we go. And I'm going to mask out all this stuff here because I don't want the next clip stroke to affect anything but this area right here. should give me one pipe there. Yep. There we go. Alright, let's go ahead and save our work.